Radio, South of the Vermont, 90.4, and the Sultan Kambu Center for Islamic Culture presents In the Monsoon Rain, reaching out through dialogue. When a newborn cries. Listen and get involved personally in this holy month of Ramadan. Reaching out through dialogue. Presented by Hatim Hadif Al Salam. Produced by Matlub Ayil Al Wahabi. Reaching out through dialogue. A special on Radio South of the Vaman 90.4. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear listeners welcome again to season 2 of our program reaching out through dialogue i'm your host hatim al absalam and today we have our distinguished guest mr ahmed ali al mukhaini who is an independent researcher in the political development and human rights assalamu alaikum ahmed wa alaikum assalam hatim. how are you today i'm fine thank you and how's fasting good alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah it's very reassuring and very comforting uh, we're very happy to have you to have you again in, in our program, and uh, I hope we continue to this uh, to the end, inshallah. 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 Ahmed, today we have an interesting topic, which is uh, rights and obligations of husbands. So let us go th- through it, inshallah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We are now living in an increasingly complex society where the traditional parameters of family life are enduring continuous are uh, enduring continuous change how do you suggest we begin examining rights and responsibilities of family members with focus on men um, well thank you very much again Hatim for uh, inviting me to talk about this uh, very important topic particularly with my interest in women rights and um, how it is very important uh, for women's rights to be enshrined and protected, Mm. that men uh, take part uh, in the protection and the fulfillment uh, of these rights. Mm. And as you have rightly said, and I think maybe I will deduce my answer from your question, Mm. um, you know, people's relationship or relationships between peoples can be seen in a variety of ways. We can see it uh, perhaps through the prism of rule of law, mm. where we are all uh, governed by the same law, and under any special uh, treatment accorded to us, there is a special uh, obligation or authority, mm. or that anything we do must conform to a law mm-hmm. or practice of law. And if um, either of these two ways do not uh, lead us to uh, justice in terms of just relationship and, and rightful uh, approach to life, then we should also seek uh, to be governed or guided by a, a higher law, whether it's moral law, international law, divine or law. divine law or yeah. law of God. But I think what is uh, could, what could be actually more interesting or maybe more relevant in our discussion today mm. is to differentiate between two concepts. The institution of marriage, which really rests on contractual obligations between a man and a woman, Mm -hmm. uh, and the concept or the institution of family, which is not really, cannot be really seen strictly from the prism of contractual obligations. Mm -hmm. Because family is more of the social building unit, is the single basic unit in building a society. Okay. where marriage is really a, a, a bilateral relationship. So the moment we actually look, go into the family uh, prism, the family concept, we cannot just see the man as a husband. We see the man as a husband, as a brother, as a son, uh, as a grandchild, and so forth. While in a, a marriage, we see man is just a husband. as a husband, mainly, mm. uh, in that regard. Mm. And... Uh, So I think it's very important for us to, when we talk about rights and obligations of men, we should decide 
which approach are you approaching from the marriage perspective or the family perspective let us start with the marriage perspective first and then uh, if we have in a sufficient time we can uh, go on mm. and see other elements of uh, yeah well the, the, because you know i think the mar- i mean this is an interesting approach because mm. with marriage perspective the marriage is in my opinion mm. is a subset of family so the institution of marriage is a subset of the institution of family and that's why you see actors or players in the family setting do control the do control the you know the actors and the parameters of marriage so you know if if we want to actually look at uh, marriage again from a contractual perspective mm. you know in a marriage added to a contract you have rights and obligations and there are certain rights before you go on to mm. rights and obligation mm. the thing is that comes into my mind is um in the perspective of feminine world that uh, men have all the rights we we only need to 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 discuss about the obligation but is this is this true that uh, men have because being a man normally you are in charge and you get to do whatever you you think you want to do i can assure you i am not in charge at my <laughs> house uh you know my wife wear, wears the pants and she makes the decisions <laughs> yeah but i think as a researcher hmm. i've been trained to uh try to look at an issue from all perspectives so a feminist perspective is a very important perspective to look at because men and women think differently allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them differently they are wired in a different way they are wired yeah. they, they approach things differently there is I, i can't say one is better than the other they just are so different you know as i said before perhaps they are like lemon and lime similar but different yeah. so uh, you might say that they are equal but not the same yes mm. they have equal rights okay in my opinion mm. they have equal rights and this equality mm. in terms of rights and capabilities yeah uh, was the basis uh, upon which the wilaya the allegiance okay and support between men and women are interchangeable which has been mentioned in the quran in, in one of the greatest verses mm. that men and women are interchangeably okay. are mutually uh, they complement each they other complement, but then they are mutually uh they should be mutually loyal to each other and they should be mutually how they say uh, have allegiance a mutual allegiance between the, the two of them the two of them okay yeah. so i think you know while we might be you know kind of masculine and kind of very uh, chauvinist in talking about uh, rights uh of men i think mm. it's also important to talk about the obligations of men okay and maybe we can start with that uh, ahmed i think let, let's actually jump between the two of them rights and obligations because i think sometimes it's important that when we talk about the right to see if there is any uh Obli- counterbalancing obligation, uh, obligation related, to that. related to it okay uh, because a, a man as a husband in a relationship mm is required by law to provide certain guarantees guarantees of safety guarantees of security guarantees of income guarantees of uh, some decision making you know some you know, when, when you are in an organization and you need to make a decision mm. you either reach that decision by consensus or by majority vote okay and then if you come up with a situation where there are equal votes you tend to actually have a casting vote that's right okay so it has been seen that in a marriage a man would be having the casting vote because generally speaking it's a man and a woman a husband and wife yeah so when they have equal you know opinions or contending opinions maybe the husband would have a casting vote and that's mainly because of what i mentioned earlier his responsibility of providing safety security and the guarantees of safety and security guarantees and of, of income um as well as there is a perception within society we live in a patriarchal society mm. where men are seen 
uh, to be the, uh, the communicators, are seen to be the interface between family and the outside world. Though this is changing rapidly now. Yeah, but we, would you say that this is only uh, a monopoly to the Eastern world or... It no. happens also in, in other cultures as well. It happens in other cultures. And, and there are perhaps two evidence, at least two evidence, uh, evidences to it. One evidence is the, uh, the issue of violence against women mm. that is uh, prevalent to an extent in some parts of Latin America, some parts of Europe, uh, among different communities. And the other uh, evidence uh, to it is um, more of, uh, how do you say, uh, empirical evidence that has shown that in some communities in Europe, particularly farming communities or uh, very rural or traditional communities, even in the States, mm. uh, men um, have um, a very specific um, precedence uh, over women. It is so uh, prominent in some uh, states and in some areas that one would, if you compare it to the situation of uh, of men uh, in the Arab world or in the Eastern world, you would think that you know men here are really subjects, while men in some of these areas in the States or mm. Southern Europe, uh, men can be very like you know kings. Between they really deal with women as their own you know masters and lords. Mm. So it is not very unique to our part of the world. However, media has shown it. Uh, the media, particularly Western media, has been very consistent in showing that, you know, women are second-class citizens in our part of the world. And unfortunately, our uh, media has contributed to this th through stereotyping. Mm. Also, some practices, some men practices or community... For example? Yeah. You know, for example, uh, when it comes to divorce... Uh, men do not always honor their rights and their duties in terms of, you know, you either hold, you know, you know, in kindness or you release in kindness and grace. Mm. Uh, and they become very vengeant uh, in their approach uh, with their, uh, to, their, to their wives. And also they don't respect the law. The law, for instance, in Iman is very clear and mm. it is to the benefit of the children and the benefit of the wife because she is seen as the weaker side of the of the contract. Yeah. Uh, but some people do not do that. Another example you would see when we travel abroad, some men make sure that there is one or two steps between them and their wives because he believes that their wives should be following them. So the, it's always the men ahead of women. Yes. So there are some people who do this. And uh, you would, you know, it would need one or two journalists or opinion leaders in the West mm. to see some practices like this. Yeah. And that would actually uh, completely change the picture uh, about men and women. So with these rights accorded, accorded to men, mm. the right of respect, the right of decision making, uh, the casting votes, I mean, um, they have duties. And the utmost important, you know, a duty of men mm -hmm. towards their husbands, uh, to their, to their wives, wives yeah. uh, and their family is the duty of care. They have to do and deliver care. Give us some examples, uh, Ahmed, of, of our lives in, example, in, in Oman, I mean. One example of care, and this is something which uh, I learned and I, maybe I should thank my wife for teaching me and for life for teaching me this is the duty of listening carefully. So you listen with care. Uh, m women, generally speaking, when they talk, they tend to talk to express grievances, concerns. Mm. They do not always seek a solution, but they seek to be listened. But women, we always give the solution straight we ahead. We try to give solutions. Yeah. We try to take it very personal. We mm. should not. Just listen and maybe respond with a nod respond with you know maybe apologies but uh, but ahmed let us be practical how long can you sit listening well that makes a difference between <laughs> a good husband and a bad husband <coughs> so you know uh, i think it's uh, because if if it starts as a trend and then it, it goes on see, there's an underlying mm. principle underlying universal principle here mm. 
and that is reciprocity. Do unto others as you would like others to do unto you. Yeah, but I think Ahmed, it's a mutual mutual thing of between course. between the the of husband course. and wife. Okay, uh, it's an obligation, or it's a uh, yeah duty. It's a it's a means of expressing care uh, from the husband. But at the same time, uh, I think also the wife should uh, be considerate and uh, maybe choose the right timings see, to talk to the husband. Well, the, the, that, that's a different story which I'm going to come to. Yeah. You see, if you want to earn your respect in the house, if you want to earn your position mm -hmm. as the decision maker or the, or the casting vote, or if you want to earn a commanding respect and presence in the family, mm. you have to do quite a few things. And most importantly, care and patience. Yeah, but a lot of people are confusing between uh, respect that you earn and the respect that you earn uh, from fear. So if you're, you're, you're strong, you're tough, and you, everybody listens to you... I don't think then... anybody can gain respect from fear. Mm. You can respect avoidance or evasion. Yeah. But you do not respect, you do not actually earn respect from fear. Fear will never beget respect. Respect can only be begotten by care, by diligence, by mutual respect, by being attentive, by love. Does, does it have do. to do with the, the era that we are living now or the, the environment? Because uh, if we go back to our grandparents, that's how it used to be. But you see, why do you, why do you go and to... They, they, they had the, 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 the wives, or our grandmothers had the respect for, for our granddads. Uh, but now, of course, it's different. Yeah, I think they had the respect, but mm. you know, I must say, I think your statement is true to an extent, but you need to see the full picture. Most probably you saw only from the outside. You did not know what was going on in the bedroom when they were mm. talking to each other. Yeah. You did not know when they had their own time and they were talking about future, future decisions. Mm. You had no idea how these decisions were, re were reached. Yeah. You can only see public discourse when they were you know, having lunch together or in the earlier times, even husbands and wives didn't eat together out of respect. Yeah. Okay? But why don't we go back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad, for example, Mm. had, had uh, how do you say, uh, a very diminutive, lovely name for Aisha. Yeah. Uh, may blessing of Allah be upon her. So he used to call her Ash. Okay? A Aisha, who is his wife. His wife, yeah. yes. Mm. So he could have spoken to her very formally. Yeah. And she would have expected that. Yeah. But he spoke to her in a very jesting, kind manner to... Because he knows she would respect him regardless, but he knew even better that if he jests with her, if he deals with her kindly, mm. that respect would be cemented with love and appreciation. Yeah. So whatever rights men demand from women, uh, they should earn these rights through the care they deliver. And to go back to the issue you, you raised, there was a very famous set of advice, or advices rather, given by uh, a Bedouin woman mm. to her daughter just okay. before she got married. And she said to her, if you, if you act like a, a, a slave to your husband, mm. he will become a slave of your own wishes. Okay, it's a question of consequence. Mm. And she said to her, if you want to talk to him, avoid two essential times. Time of food and time of sleep. I agree. Okay. I totally agree. Because, <laughs> and she said to her, yeah. if you distract him or if you bring him something which might upset him or kind of undermines his enjoyment of either food or sleep, you know, he would associate, you know, you, I mean the, the wife, mm with malicious, you know, activities, with, he, with malicious, or he would associate your presence or your discussion with negativity. But choose the time when you think he's open, he's ready. Prepare him in advance. That you're going to talk to him yes. about something. And then also, you know, one of the, one of the part of the advice mm. is that 
try to identify what actually attracts his attention in mm. terms of food, words, dress code, whatever, and do it. And really, if you look at this, this is applicable also to men. Mm. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, peace be upon him, said, "When you get back to back back home, don't barge in, because maybe your wife is in a situation that she does not want to see you to see to see her in. So you have to make sure that you know you say salamu alaykum." You, you know, give, you you ask you for advance, permission, advance, advance warning. Mm. So then you are not startling her. Okay. Okay. Uh, another thing is, you know, his, the Prophet Muhammad advice is also, as um, a, a husband demands his wife mm. to be attentive of his needs, he should be attentive to her of needs. her needs. Mm. You said something very interesting, Ahmed, uh, regarding that uh, the wife should choose a particular time or the suitable time to talk to the husband and prepare him uh, before talking to him. Uh, can we consider this to be as a, a right for the husband or is it something that will complement the relationship? It's, 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 uh, you see, I don't think it's really a right to the husband. Mm. Perhaps the literature, the Arabic literature has coined it in that way. Mm. But it's merely uh, the right of any of the other party in any relationship. Mm. You know, even your boss. Mm. If you want to talk to your boss about something, would you choose a time when the boss is really angry or upset? Yeah, definitely not. So, yeah. The thing is, we take the people we love for granted, and we look at them only from the prism of my rights. We do not look at it from the prism of their rights and my duties. And that's where we do the migration from but, marriage. Ahmed, but the thing is, where 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 do we distinguish between my rights and their rights? You know, this is where people go wrong. People need to understand that okay, you need to reconcile and come to the middle point. Mm. And well, well, the middle point is what I was going to say is the mm. family. You see, if you continue looking at things from a rights perspective and duty perspective, right and obligation perspective, then perhaps you have in your mind that you're going to court, that you are trying to invoke the contract between you and your wife or between a man and his wife. Yeah. Okay? But the midpoint, the, the marriage, is leading towards a family. But before family, is leading towards joy. If you look at the definition of marriage, mm. As a contract. It's a contract of joy. The ultimate pur purpose of the marriage contract is enjoyment. For the first month. No, no, no. Or for it should be for, the, for eternity. <laughs> okay? Yeah. That mm -hmm. you should enjoy, one should enjoy his wife. Yeah. And the wife should enjoy her husband. Okay? And they should enjoy each other in a variety of ways. It could be intellectual. It could be sexual. It could be food companionship, all forms of joy. This joy might then culminate into uh, you know, reproduction of a family. Yeah. Okay, and then their rights and responsibilities get transformed from strictly being um, you know, reciprocal mm -hmm. into more of the institution of family. I would, I would, that, I would, if I would, may just say yeah. one thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why most of us, you know, counselors mm. they observe that the moment a child is born the purpose of marriage is forgotten okay and people keep very much concentrating on the institution of family forgetting the institution of marriage mm. while a successful relationship between a man and a woman is when both institutions are interplaying with each other you do not ignore the joy that you are seeking with your wife and the joy she should be getting. At the same time, you should build and nurture that family. Okay. Ahmed, we'll get back to your point after the break. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam, passed away in his home in Medina. You are listening to the program Reaching Out Through Dialogue. We will be back for more in just a moment. 
Welcome back, Ahmed. Thank you. Now, you were talking before the break um, um, regarding the, um, the, 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 family, the family and the marriage, the joy of marriage, and plus uh, do not concentrate only on the, fa- on the family side of the equation and yes. um, put more effort uh, in the joy between the, 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 the marriage life. Yeah. Well, because I see, you know, I think, you know, whatever is deemed to be a right of a husband, they become automatically deliverable the moment joyful ambience is there. Mm-hmm. And there is joy and there is respect. A man would not need to demand it. And then he would be able to move in a continuum between marriage and family. Marriage and family. And there's interesting Uh, observation, perhaps I should say here, mm. one of the prime uh, jurisprudence principles, Qawa'ad uh, al-Fiqh, said that the Sharia has been instituted for the joy and happiness of mankind. Can you elaborate more yeah. on that? Mm. One of the, the prime rule mm. in any jurisprudence activity mm-hmm. uh, to deduce your ruling is to see what is more conducive to the happiness and joy of the people of mm. mankind and so if the act is conducive to this joy yeah and if the act is not compromising someone else's joy so we have equal rights of joy and this equal rights is equally enjoyed yeah and equally exercised then that act is lawful by Sharia. But the moment an act compromises the right of a person to enjoy his life or to have happiness in one way or the other, then that act becomes unlawful. That makes a lot of sense, Ahmed. Now, being uh, uh, men, Uh, coming back from work, tired, after a long day, distress. Uh, you need a peace of mind. You need your food to be served on the table. You need some way to put your feet up. Um, is Are those legitimate rights for men? Or is it something that uh, you need to work it out or compromise or... Uh, I would say I that these are not this. rights, these are demands. Okay? Not really, you're alone and uh, no. you, you don't... Uh... No, these are demands and mm. I'm saying this out of mm. uh, nothingness. Uh, the various Islamic schools of thought mm-hmm. have been debating this issue. Is it a right or is it a demand? Is it something a woman would do out of volition or is she required by law, by Sharia, to do it. And if she doesn't do it, she is violating Sharia. Mm. And the conclusion that I seem to remember that most of them have have reached or, is that women are not obliged to serve their husbands. Mm. Women are not obliged even to nurse or feed their children. It's only out of her nature, out of the prerequisites of harmony mm. and cohesion within the family, yeah. in order for that cohesion and harmony to be expanded and extended to the surrounding, to the community at large. But by Sharia, she is not. In fact, some scholars, men I must say, mm. men scholars, mm-hmm. have said that husbands should pay their wives for wet nursing, for feeding, for breastfeeding, I mean, their children. Because mm, she has to do, yes, <laughs> do it for her. So I don't think you should read this argument with your wife if she's yeah. listening. <laughs> because you might actually... You've already said it live on air. Yeah. So I think, yeah. you know, we need to distinguish between rights and demands. Yeah. Men demand uh, to be served and pampered when they come back from work. But there are two issues here, I mean, to be practical. How many times, 
have you stayed at home looking after the children, cleaning the house, doing the food, sorting out things? I mean, this is a question for you. How many times have you done that? Well, I guess that's a tricky question, yeah. but uh, I would say we're living in a very fast world now, and uh, you would find that a husband and a wife, both of them work, work and outside. come back uh, yeah. from work. They're tired. You don't have a maid. You have kids. So you end up like washing the dishes and the wife preparing dinner. So you would oh, do the work exactly. equally together, yeah, exactly. and both of you will feel good about it. Because you are sharing uh, exactly uh, this this responsibility absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but I think because I, so I think this view this orientalist view yeah but of Ahmed Sayed you know may, if I may continue yeah. for a minute mm. of Sayed coming to the house having you know the bucket for his uh, you know his uh, feet to be washed and for for the food to be served the you know and the, the children to be quietened. And all, I think not, not really. I didn't put in that. I didn't. I didn't mean that way. But what what I'm trying to say is now, uh, if you see most of the houses, we have maids, mm. okay, and even the wife don't get to do anything uh, in the house. Most of the time, the maid takes takes care of the kids. That she cooks, she cleans, and everything. She even takes care of the uh, the the wife as well mm. of her needs. So uh, you would assume as a man that uh, okay. If someone is taking care of the wife and the kids and the kitchen and everything, I would assume that when I come back home, my wife is relaxed and is she's happy. She has she had a good day at home. Uh, I would I would love some attention and uh, mm. so yeah. I think you know, you know I just has phrased it. You have phrased it now as you would love. Yeah, it is not a right. No, no, it's, it's more of an right, entitlement, yeah. perhaps. Okay. Mm. Because right is more universal. It's kind of universal. Yeah. While ent entitlement is relative, it's very much subject to some conditions being fulfilled or being present. So, and this is something you would love to have. I don't think most men would love to have this. Definitely. Yeah. And actually, to mm. be honest, uh, some women, maybe quite few women, like to have the opportunity to pamper their husbands, to feel needed, i.e. the women. Yeah. I know one of the main contentious issues between me and my wife mm. is that I'm very independent at home. Almost in everything I do, I do my, you know, for myself. So she does not feel that is needed for the mundane stuff. Okay. You know, food, drinks, clothing, whatever. I'm quite independent in this. Uh, but so women like to feel that they are needed, that they can, they are, they, they can do these personal, you know, kind of stuff hmm. uh, for their husband. But I think it's very dangerous. In uh, what sense? For not Very dangerous for men mm. to think about them at their rights. Uh, yeah, of course, dangerous... the, 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 the concept has, has to change. Yes. The, the, the misconception has to change. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I would assume that, you know, it would bring joy for the couple. It would uh, make yeah. both of them happy if the wife feels the pleasure of serving her husband and the husband likes it, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in in, in yeah. my life, you know, uh, I've been married now for about 14 years. Inshallah. Inshallah, i be more. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to celebrate my diamond anniversary Inshallah. before I, you know, kick the bucket. And <laughs> but, you know, um, I think what made us go through, because every journey had its own, you know, ups and downs. Mm. What made us through are as follows. Okay. A, patience. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, you can never hate your wife wholeheartedly or full-fledgedly. You might actually dislike one aspect of her personality, yeah. but you would like others. So if something happens at home, look at the other elements you like about her. This is this them. is what we're lacking, Ahmed. Is uh, most of the time when something goes wrong, we tend to look at that thing and uh, with a magnifying glass, and we, we we tend to forget about the good things that uh, we went through with yes. with our family. It's, it's inevitable. Maybe it's a human nature, and that's mm. why, as a Muslim mm. and as a person who is very conscientious about what he does, mm -hmm. you should or one should really try to balance his view towards the other particularly his wife. Hmm. So, 
I, this is the first thing. So you need to pay attention to the person in front of you in, in all uh, aspects. Mm. And second thing, you should give the person the benefit of doubt. In a sense, if something happens, maybe there's an explanation you don't know. So don't don't jump into a conclusion. conclusions. Mm. Maybe there's something disturbing your wife, so you have to go and talk. Okay? Maybe she's been nice to you through for the last kind of one month, two months, but then something happened. You don't know something you've done, or something happened two days ago, and, or somewhere else. And you and you didn't feel that something was wrong. Exactly. And mm. but then it's just accumulated and then resulted in have you. And then thirdly, it's patience. Really, patience. Patience is, is half of faith. Shatr al-Iman. Ahmed, can we put compromising next to patience? Do they go along? What do you mean by compromise? It means uh, even if you see something that you don't like, you mm. you just uh, yes. go along with it so that, you know... You have to think of the bigger good. The, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the more general, the more extensive good. Yes. yes. Of, course, of course, there are red lines that, uh, you know... Uh, there are certain things that you wouldn't allow. Certain. Yeah, I'm not very certain. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm. The moment you actually have definition mm. or something called red lines, this red line can be scaled up, and you can always add something. Oh, this is red line. This is red line. So there is no end for the red line. No, not yeah. these days, uh, yeah. Ahmed, the women uh, train and go to the gym. I don't think you can exceed the red lines. Well, you never know. You get I a mean, punch in your face, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> I think you know, for, in, in, from my experience. Yeah. This is the fourth thing, mm. is to talk. You know, if something you don't like, talk. Men tend to have what I call the cave theory. Cave theory means that when there is a problem, either something he observed or his wife said about him, men tend to recline, to go into their own seclusion. Don't talk, don't say anything. They wait for the cloud to clear. Then they come out from the cave. Regarding this, I wanted to ask you, Ahmed, why is it so easy to talk to our friends and colleagues at work about anything, even if there's something wrong? But when it comes to the closest people to our to our hearts, it becomes so difficult to talk to them. It depends. I think there is a concern of being judged. It's almost the same principle of talking to a stranger on the train mm. or next to you in the airplane. You tell him all about you. But he won't tell your brother about it. <laughs> I would share something with you. Uh, I find it very, very difficult um, to say something nasty, let's say, for, for to, to my wife, if I don't like something. So what, what we created is uh, we develop a system that if I don't like something, I write an email to her. Yeah. And then she responds. And it becomes a tag of war. And at the end of the day, when I go home, that's everything is solved. We don't talk about it. Mm. And uh, we've uh, reconciled our issues. That's good. And it, it worked for many years because uh, I think that I might be hot-tempered and if I start a particular topic that uh, it might end up uh, with someone losing his nose or something. <laughs> so, so well, we, I, think, I, th I think talking to each other, whatever way, by email or by SMS or... Uh, I, find, I found from my experience... Mm that there is a sense of content uh, if you are the first to concede. Meaning? Meaning, in arguments or in positions where my wife and I had some misunderstandings, while I knew fully that I had the right, and but both of us were really fixed in our positions, I made the first step and say, I'm sorry or forget about it, if I upset you or whatever, then I will draw. I yeah. will do. And I found that this is, you know, really brings a, this brings a lot of content, and really put a lot of guilt on the other side, which then eventually would cement the relationship. Ahmed, I was guided, Ahmed you're saying this on on air, yeah. so <laughs> now no, now she would know the trick. <laughs> it wouldn't know, work anymore. Maybe maybe she will not be listening. <laughs> so you see the thing that. I, w I really was inspired by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, peace him. Be upon him. He said, it is not lawful for any two Muslims or brothers or friends or 
people who like each other, to be in dispute over three days, mo- longer than three days. Yeah. And the best among them is the person who goes first and extends his hand and concedes. Because it shows that you have conquered your ego. It shows that you have a bigger goal in mind, the serenity, cohesion, and harmony of your family, and by extension, your society. And then, it's the issue of do unto others as you would like others to do unto you. I would share uh, an advice that uh, my father gave uh, to me when I wanted to get married, and he told me that uh, make sure if you have a misunderstanding with your wife, it ends in the bedroom. Mm. So when you go out of the bedroom, nobody should notice that there's something wrong. Plus, do not go to sleep until you sort out your issues. Don't keep it to the next day because they accumulate and they, be- they become bigger. Yeah, so I have a challenge with that, actually. We, we tend to sort out our issues the same day and that's it. I have to yeah. challenge with that because mm. I, I have this habit of sleeping regardless. <laughs> 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 But my wife doesn't sleep unless you know, things are cleared. Okay, she actually spends the whole night just thinking about it. So this well, is being selfish, Ahmed, yeah. that you're snoring no, and uh, uh, she's thinking about it. I don't snore usually <laughs> unless she records me to actually them. But usually it's just a sense that um, I think as a man, mm. I resort to sleep to escape. It's a form of escapism. Yeah. It's like the cave theory. Mm. Women do not like to escape. Women they like they to want conf- to get, a, yes, get women, o- the, the issue over. Yeah, they, want, they like to confront the situation, mm. women generally speaking. And that's why men avoid talking to women about this. They talk to other men. Yeah. Okay? Because women will tell you what you have done wrong or not. And as I said, just listen. And I'm very grateful to my wife because wherever I tried, whenever I tried to actually avoid talking about an issue, She brings me mm. back and to reality. And she says to me, no, we have to talk about it, A, B, C, and D. And um, though at that moment I despise it, mm. but after a, while, after a while I do realize how appreciative I, I have been, uh, or I should be rather, uh, for her intervention. Mm. So I think, you know, I have said it's the issue of patience, respect, And do, let us not think as men mm. in terms of rights. Let's think about them in terms of entitlements. Mm. And let's think about them in, sense, in, in a reciprocal sense. You know, what I've been doing, every time I'm going through something, I always ask myself the question. Yeah. How would I feel if my wife was doing the same thing? How would I feel if my wife was saying this? Mm. How would I feel if my wife just came now and saw me in this situation? Either at work or doing something or checking or chatting or whatever. whatever. Yeah. Okay? And through this, I rationalize it. Mm. I become in, really come into terms with it. And then the moment I send that, that I have some concerns about it, mm. then I stop doing it. Because for me, it becomes unlawful to actually do something where you are certain your wife wouldn't accept. Except things that happens is, you know, if your wife gets jealous about work. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's a different story. I, uh, I was really interested to know about uh, obligation towards emotional needs. Now, we men, most, uh, some of the men, some of, I would say some of the men, um, they, they might not be so romantic, mm. okay? And they would not fulfill the emotional needs of their wives. Yes. Um, what can we say eh, regarding this, Ahmed? Well, I'm not the best doctor in this because I'm myself a patient. Mm. And this <laughs> is that. My wife keeps reminding me all the time uh, about it. Uh, I think because of our duty... of uh, maintaining order in the family and, uh, you know, earning and working, we confuse uh, integrity. 
we confuse it completely with uh, how do you say harshness. We, we, should not need, we need not be harsh. As I said earlier, the Prophet Muhammad joked with his wives, yeah. or joked with his wife, and, and was compassionate and as was well. Very compassionate. And I think we need to express. There are a variety of ways. There is an application on iPhone that says 101 ways <laughs> of uh, you know expressing love to your wife, oh. and they vary. I mean, it could be just saying a nice word, maybe a hug. Uh, Remembering her with a gift from time to time. The thing, Ahmed, that really confuses me is that we can be so nice and uh, to our friends and colleagues, but we don't do it at home. And the other thing is, we used to be nice, romantic, in the early days of marriage. How can we get that uh, we take sparkle it, back? We take it for mm. granted, as I said earlier, mm. and we really move into the, the gear of uh, institution of family. We forget the gear of marriage. Marriage is really dependent on joy. But we soon forget about joy and we become very practical about family, yeah. maintaining the family. And I think it requires both sides to remind each other how to be married couples. You know, I mean, my wife keeps reminding me and that's how I actually... I mean, now, of course, I use the iPhone and I have a reminder. <laughs> and then every now and then, okay, it's time for... But then the question that poses itself... Yeah. Do you then do it out of duty or out of love? And in my opinion, duty uh, really springs from love and would lead to love. It's like prayer. So, so you mean to say that uh, do it as a duty first and then it will slowly develop into love? If you don't have love at the, at the first place, love, yeah. yeah. Particularly with arranged marriages. So, for example, if you m make it a duty upon yourself to deal joyfully with your wife, mm. that duty would become love. Because man is an animal of habit. Though, of course, there's a contention issue, contentious issue about mm. intention, but man, generally speaking, is an animal of habit. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad said, Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. That prayers prevent people from evil. Mm. By doing it habitually, it will in, it will really instill within you certain practices, certain values, and the goodness, and the goodness. And that's why there's this, there's a continuum between whether intention precedes action, or action can lead to intention. Mm. Ahmed, um, <clears throat> I want you to say a few words to the next generation that are approaching uh, marriage life. Um, we want to remind them of their rights, their obligations, how to be good husbands, how to be strong and firm and loving and romantic at the same time. Uh, could you please... I would say very words? briefly, yeah. think not of your rights, mm. but of your duties. Because your rights are automatic outcomes. They would come, they were just automatically delivered to you when you deliver and you render all your duties. Mm. And uh, I think there are two issues, two corner principles mm. uh, that are very important to, for any marriage life. And that is respect and being just, justice. Mm. Okay? And, so, and, and both of them, are bound by mutuality, are bound by reciprocity, both of them. So I think with that, you will not go wrong, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Ahmed, thank you so much uh, for giving us your time and Pleasure. sharing some light on this topic. This this topic, of course, is an ocean. I'm sure we haven't covered uh, yes, half well. of what we intended, but uh, uh, I hope our listeners have enjoyed it, have gained uh, some knowledge out of it. And uh, we hope to see you soon, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you so much. I'm your host, Hatim Al-Absalam. Thank you so much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.